Cause I'm the data guy, making bytes fly high, diving deep into the data, reaching for the sky, from ETLs to data lakes and pipelines that don't break. Tune in, hang on, and let's make data great. Hey y'all, Data Guy here, and today I have a much requested video for you on how to use great expectations for data quality checks along with Airflow. Um, so if you want to see it done with, you know, a specific database or a specific provider, um, I actually have one um, on Snowflake already, but drop it in the description below. I'll expand on this series because it's been so popular. Um, if you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe. It helps me immensely. Um, it gives me motivation to make more videos. Um, and if you have an idea for a future video, drop it in the comments. Um, and now that all that's out of the way, sorry, it's my YouTuber spiel. Um, I want to get into kind of the topic of the day, which is how to use great expectations with Airflow and why you know you might want to use it. Um, so great expectations is a great project for kind of managing uh, data quality checks at scale. You, know, you can define these data quality check um, kind of packages and uh, project or expectations, <laughs> which are basically kind of configuration files for what you expect your data to look like. Um, and so you know you can kind of store and manage all these different configuration files um, in different ways and. It's a very uh, scalable platform, uh, but it is a little bit difficult to use sometimes. You know, they do have your great patients cloud for visualization layer, um, and a lot of people use it. So it does have really good integrations with a lot of other systems. Um, one of those being Airflow. Um, so great expectations uh, actually has a first class provider package for Airflow. Um, so in order to get started using that provider, um, what you'll need to do is actually just uh, install it in your requirements file. Um, so gotten our airflow or our great expectation provider, and this will just allow us to directly connect um, to great expectations without needing to use any other kind of wonky methods. Um, unlike Soda, where you have to use Bash, um, you know, you still get the information during the logs, but it's just kind of tough uh, visually when you're you know looking at a massive data pipeline at scale. Um, and so after you're done that, we're actually going to and so what you'll actually also need to do is not only install the requirements package, but also install great expectations locally. Um, if you don't want to do this, you can add a include folder um, into your Airflow directory, but if you're going to be using great expectations, just why not have it uh, installed in your system. Um, but if you're using it in the cloud, you will also you know, want to include the folder that I'll show you later um, in your Azure directory. But here we're just going to pip install great expectations. Um, so we have it accessible on a local machine. Um, and so because I'm running it locally, obviously. Um, and then I'll kind of skip ahead for this to finish downloading. So then once you've uh, installed Great Expectations, we'll create Expectations init. Um, and this will create a new Great Expectations project within my folder. Um, so this is that thing I'm saying, if you want to just copy and paste a folder in here, you can. Um, but you can see here, this will initialize similarly you know, to the Astro CLI, a local Great Expectations um, repo that I can then use to you know, manage my Great Expectations jobs. Um, and so this is where everything that is related to great expectations is going to go. This is where I'm going to define kind of my data quality checks. Um, and yeah, it, it's just for a pretty convenient, um, way to, you know, get started with it, which is, you know, nice, nice little CLI tool. It's always good to have a great CLI tool, which is why I love Astro. Um, so then once we're done with that, um, we're actually going to need to create our expectations. Um, so you can find a bunch of these online, um, on, you know, they have existing example, great expectations or expectations on the great expectations website. My mouth is going to get exhausted from saying that word. Um, so what I'm going to do here is create a JSON file called strawberry sweet, uh, because it's a sweet, sweet strawberry. Um, and you're going to find your great expectations using JSON. So we'll get out of the terminal now. Um, and I'm going to use the strawberry suite, uh, to find my great expectation, <laughs> Uh, here, which is saying, hey, I want the table row count to be between two and a thousand. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm, I'm not making it super complicated here. Just wanted to use this as an example of, hey, you know, this is how you can enable great expectations um, without getting too crazy with it. Um, but you can see this is kind of, you again, don't define it um, using straight SQL. You actually define it using expectation types that are kind of based off of SQL statements. Um, so it's almost like a layer in between uh, great expectations and SQL. It's kind of similar to the SOTA CL, um, but SOTA CL is, is more of a language versus this is like you know straight JSON definition um, style. And so now what we'll do is actually create a connection for our great expectations uh, suite to actually use. Um, so to do that, we are going to go in the Airflow UI. So let's kick it over. So 
for ease of use here, um, I'm just going to use the local Postgres database. Uh, so just the local backend uh, Airflow database, uh, but use whatever you want. Um, I just felt lazy today, didn't want, and I also don't want to have to cut in and out um, to put in you know, my secret credentials. Um, so here we are going to um, put in our Postgres, Postgres login, password. Um, so just, you know, default Postgres stuff. Um, our port is going to be 5432. And our host is Postgres as well. Um, delightful. Um, we are also just going to use the default Postgres schema. So Postgres here, um, you know, and we have our port as well. So that should be all good. Um, and since we're using Airflow 2.7, you can't test connections anymore, um, which I want to fight someone about in the community community, but I guess it's best practices for safety and all that garbage. Um, so now we have our Postgres connection defined. Um, so let's go back into our um, Airflow directory. And what we'll do here is actually define our DAG finally. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of setup before you actually get to define your DAG with great expectations. Um, so here, what we'll do is go into our DAGs file. We'll create a new DAG called GX tutorial.py. Um, and then within this, we are going to build our DAG. So first, we're going to import all of our um, necessary kind of packages and variables. Um, so here, just defining our Postgres connection, um, getting our uh, Greg Quotations operator in here as well as our Postgres operator. Um, and then what we'll do is uh, create our, define our DAG. So here, just basic DAG definition, um, just using the DAG def uh, decorator. Um, and then what we'll do is Sorry, define it actually as GX tutorial. My bad, I didn't actually finish defining it. Um, and just create a table within Postgres. Um, so this is just creating a random table that we're gonna use to then test some of these values um, and insert uh, the strawberry order in here. Um, so nothing too crazy. This is just kind of set up to actually demonstrate, you know, running this great expectations uh, suite. So then what we'll do after we run that is actually run our great expectations Sweet. So to do that, you'll use the great expectations operator. Surprise, surprise. Um, you'll have to set your connection ID to your database here. So this is the, why I was talking about you need to set this um, to actually you know connect and use great expectations there. You can do it other ways, um, like defining it in the great expectations file, but I'm not even going to bother showing them because they're such a pain in the ass. Um, and I tried them before because like, oh, you know, I had, I'll show all the different ways. No, uh, do it this way using the connection ID. Uh, if you can't, then drop it in the comments rows to me and, and I'll figure it out figure it out, but annoying. Um, and then just kind of your data context root directory. So include great expectations um, and then data asset name, strawberries, expectation suite name, uh, strawberry suite. Um, and then we're turning a JSON dic dictionary of, you know, what the results of that data quality uh, check were. Um, and just so you know, data asset name is just the strawberries table we just created using the Postgres operator. Um, and then once we're done with that, we will drop that table. So drop it like it's hot. Um, and then we'll just set some basic bitmapping here um, to just finish up the job. Um, so again, nothing too crazy, nothing too complicated, um, all pretty standard stuff here. Um, and so now let's kick it over into the back in the Airflow UI and we'll kind of show you what this looks like um, in practice. And so actually one more change, because I just tested it and didn't want to show you guys me screwing it up, is we'll actually need to add Postgres uh, dot strawberry series, your schema dot your actual data name, um, so it knows where to look. Um, I'm not sure what just happened there, but yeah, Postgres dot strawberries, save, um, and now we'll switch it over to uh, the actual Airflow UI so we can test it and you can see my failures here. Um, so here we'll hit trigger dad. And there we have it, after some trial and error on my part, uh, you'll actually not want to define your schema in your Postgres connection. So this is what it will look like after. Um, so I screwed up on that and it kept failing me. So that's why I had a little break there, um, which you obviously didn't see. Um, and so once this is all run successfully, so if we look at the actual Postgres um, logs, you'll see um, the success, the uh, definition of the checkpoint. So this will also get saved um, in the checkpoint folder in that great expectations kind of file directory we created um, uh, near the start. Um, but if you just want to look at it via the Airflow UI, you don't want to bother going into the file structure. Um, here, you can just look at the logs and you'll see your great expectation checkpoint um, results. 
And so every time you run a great expectation suite, that's called a checkpoint. Um, so that's why you know you're seeing that terminology here. Um, and so you can see we have strawberries, great expectation, all good for the races. Um, so we pass our data quality checks, um, our very basic simple ones. Um, so now time to build on and get even more complicated. Um, so I really hope this helped you understand, you know, kind of how you can use posts or you can use great expectations with Airflow. Um, if I didn't cover anything, if I missed anything, um, let me know and I'll make a follow-up video. Um, but I really hope this helps all the people that were requesting it. And if you did like or request it, please toss a like if this actually helped you. Um, so without further ado, data guy out. See you tomorrow.